I've got a huge raging video for you guys today. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Wizmax Morph MK1. The Morph MK1 is an RGB mechanical keyboard equipped with red linear second gen manic switches and a 1000 hz pulling rate for maximum speed. The MK1 is also built with a high quality aluminum frame and the switches included are rated for an incredible 60 million clicks of durability. Not only that, but it's incredibly customizable allowing you to replace each individual key and set different lighting profiles for the keys as well as the RGB bar above to match your setup. So if you're looking for a high quality and affordable mechanical mechanical keyboard, be sure to click the link in the description below. So finally, after a year and a half, the RTX 30 series is starting to become a lot more available and for much more reasonable prices, which is something that should have happened a very, very long time ago, but we had that whole year and a half of just absolutely terrible shortages, and with this finally coming to a close, a lot of people are actually starting to get very, very excited for the RTX 40 series, because yes, getting an RTX 30 series card near or even at its MSRP is actually a very exciting prospect, but what's even more more exciting is getting an RTX 40 series card if you're able to get it at its MSRP near its launch because the RTX 40 series and even the RX 7000 series coming out from AMD are looking to be possibly the most giant leap in terms of performance that we have ever seen out of any single generation ever and that's got a lot of people very very excited for these new GPUs however there is still one big concern that a lot of people are talking about and that's shortages because you know what after going through a whole year and a half of that nightmare a lot of people just are feeling very, very abused by the whole thing and are starting to worry, you know, is the next generation going to be just as bad as the RTX 30 series? Well, I got some really great news for you guys because it's starting to look like that's going to be very, very unlikely to be the case. It's looking like the RTX 40 series should be much more in line with previous generations like the RTX 20 series where, yes, maybe for a couple weeks at launch, it will be a little bit difficult to get a card, but after that occurs, it should be much, much more normal and you should be able to walk into a store and buy buy a GPU if things go to plan. Now, this information comes from the website Tom's Hardware. I'm going to go ahead and read it to you guys, and then we'll talk about it. So according to Tom's Hardware, they say, quote, for the last few years, TSMC's N5 nodes have been used almost exclusively by Apple for its system on chips aimed at smartphones and PCs. But as more companies adopt these fabrication technologies, TSMC has had to increase its production capacities. A new report says that TSMC will increase its N5 production capacity by around 25% this year to meet the demand for N5 chips from the likes of AMD, Nvidia, and MediaTek. So this is definitely some absolutely fantastic news for gamers because 25% is definitely nothing to sneeze at. That is going to be a massive increase in the amount of production that they're going to be putting out there. So when it comes to NVIDIA going to get more wafers, which by the way, another thing that we've talked about in the past, but I'll bring up just now, that apparently NVIDIA is purchasing way, way more as not too long ago. We talked about them potentially putting up to nearly $9 billion towards TSMC's wafers, which is a massive increase over anything they have ever put towards wafer capacity ever before. I mean, you know, in the past, we've been talking about maybe magnitudes of like a couple billion. I think recently they talked about over six billion dollars they're spending on wafer capacity, but nine billion dollars to secure some TSMC five nanometer and four nanometer capacity is a massive jump in terms of spending coming out of NVIDIA. So that's also some really great news. We also have to keep in mind that there were potentially some new uh, fabrication plants that were going to be coming online between 2023 and 2025. So that's also going to be some great news when it comes to supply. So when we take all this stuff into account, I think it is pretty safe to say at this point that I don't think we're going to be seeing a repeat of the RTX 30 series, although there is going to be a lot of competition in the first couple weeks and even possibly months for getting these graphics cards. I do think that as time goes on, it's going to start to normalize and you are going to see a generation that more reflects the RTX 20 series, except for getting a lot more performance. I think you're going to see a small increase in terms of pricing, but it also is going to be a massive increase in terms of performance. So there's definitely going to be more interest this time around. However, we do have to keep in mind that there's going to be a lot more supply as well. So I do think that the RTX 40 series is going to be an absolutely fantastic generation for gamers who are looking to upgrade. But speaking of next generation, now let's go ahead and talk about some big news that was just released by the YouTuber Red Gaming Tech. I will have a link to his whole video in the description below, but he went ahead and leaked a bunch of information about some next generation CPUs and GPUs. So let's go ahead and start off with some Zen 4 information. Now I'm going to go ahead and kind of quickly go over the stuff that I think you guys are going to find most interesting, but if you do want to watch the entire thing and get every single little bit of news out of it, again, I will have that linked in the description below, but make sure you finish my video first.
first, of course. But in any case, starting off with Zen 4, we can see that according to Red Gaming Tech, it's going to excel in low power environments, so it's going to be great for laptops. It's going to have apparently double the amount of L2 cache per core, and the L3 is going to be the same as Zen 3 per CCX. Now, apparently, it's going to have a pretty big IPC improvement of around 20 to 25 percent, and he's actually expecting a little bit closer to that 25 percent, so that is a massive increase in instructions per clock. Now, in terms of actual single threaded performance, he's expecting somewhere between 35 to 40 percent increase over Zen 3, I believe, which is just absolutely insane. So, yeah, Zen 4 is looking like, in terms of its single threaded performance, it's going to be a massive upgrade. Now, if we take a look at the other specs, apparently the top CPU is going to be still 16 cores and 32 threads. I'm totally okay with that. And apparently, it's going to have around a 5.1 to 5.2 gigahertz single core boost clock. And then, in terms of all core, we're talking 5 gigahertz. And then he does actually mention, in terms of a release date, uh, sometime around Q3 or Q4, which does actually sound pretty right to me. Now, apparently, also, there's going to be some sort of Ryzen Vcache model planned. I honestly don't know about that, but uh, he definitely has a lot of really great sources. So, if they go ahead and do that, yeah, I mean, hey, I'll take it. But now let's go ahead and move on to the GPUs, and let's start off by talking about AMD's RX 7000 series, kind of more entry-level GPUs, Navi 33. And now, don't let entry-level, uh, you know, misguide you. This is going to be a massive improvement. Apparently, we're talking closer to, like, 6900 XT types of performance out of this thing. Apparently, it's going to be uh, developed on TSMC's 6 nanometer node on a monolithic die. That's actually a little bit bizarre to me. I was actually expecting 5 nanometer, but hey, maybe they will end up actually going ahead and doing that apparently it's gonna have 128 bit buzz with 4096 stream processors that actually does sound correct to me 128 megabytes of infinity cache absolutely massive but again sounds right to me apparently it's gonna have 8 gigabytes of ram which honestly that does not sound good i was expecting 12 gigabytes of ram but i guess we'll just have to wait and see apparently there might be some 16 gigabyte models which would be a lot better although those are likely gonna be according to him radeon pro versions so hopefully that's not the case hopefully we do get a 12 or 16 gigabyte version version of this GPU. It just depends on what they do with the memory bus. Now, apparently in terms of its power, we're talking about between 225 to 250 watts, and then for the mobile version, between 120 to 150 watts. That also sounds about right, but here's something that I really don't like, guys. Apparently, it's only going to have eight PCIe lanes. I really don't like that. I know it's probably going to be PCIe 5, but still, I do not like to see that whatsoever. Now, moving on to the big boy GPU, the Navi 31. This is going to be the one that's no longer a monolithic die, the MCM Approach one. The big, big, massive glued together thing. So this thing apparently is going to be produced on TSMC 5 nanometer with some 6 nanometer for the MCD, which is going to house stuff like the Infinity Cache, and I've definitely heard that before. Now, in terms of the amount of shaders, apparently there's going to be 7,680 shaders per GCD, and there's going to be two of them, meaning that's going to be over 15,000 shaders. Again, that sounds correct. Apparently, it's going to be 256-bit bus with 16 gigabytes of RAM. I've talked about that before. Makes a lot of sense, but there could be a 32 gigabyte model, and I actually do believe they will make one 32 gigabyte model but we'll just have to wait and see now in terms of the clock speeds on this one now i forgot to mention the navi 33 card apparently is going to be boosting up to like three gigahertz absolutely insane this one's going to be boosting between 2.6 to 2.8 gigahertz probably a lot of that has to do with simply the amount of power it would draw if you did try to do three gigahertz across 15,000 shaders so yeah that makes a lot more sense to me power consumption speaking of which we're probably talking between 375 to 450 watts uh which is just starting to get insane but nowhere near as bad as some of the stuff we've been hearing uh, out of Lovelace. In terms of ray tracing performance, he's expecting over 3x, which makes a lot of sense because he got 3x the amount of ray tracing cores. All they have to do is make them a little bit better, and there you go. Poof, Bob's your uncle. Now, moving on to the Teraflops, or FP32 performance, the regular DirectX 11 type of gaming performance you would expect to see out of this. Uh, apparently, 80 teraflops, which would be over three times the 6900 XT. Now, he's actually expecting around 2.5x. I'm actually expecting even lower. I'm expecting like 2.3x the amount of performance. I think they are going to have some driver uh, issues to get over as well as some, you know, moving to your first MCM design. I just don't think it's going to scale quite as well as people were hoping. But hey, maybe I'm wrong and maybe it will be three times as fast. Now, in terms of the infinity cache, apparently we're talking about 512 megabytes. And again, I've heard this before and it definitely does sound correct. So there you go. There's all the updated information that I have on Zen 4 and RDNA 3. Honestly, guys, 
guys, it's starting to look absolutely insane. I keep hearing more and more information about especially uh, the next generation of GPUs out of AMD, and it's starting to look like AMD could actually beat NVIDIA for the first time ever. Now, are they going to beat them in absolutely everything? That's something I don't know. I'm definitely going to be curious to see how is their software department going to go ahead and catch up because there are a few things that they do need to work on, in my opinion, and if they can get their software on par with NVIDIA and beat them in terms of performance, uh, just in terms of raw FP32 compute, I think it's going to be a big deal for AMD, and it's only going to be a good thing for customers as it is going to push NVIDIA to try and get a little bit more aggressive with their performance as well as their pricing. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think the AMD is finally going to beat NVIDIA? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.